sometimes I find an image that really interests me and I think would be fun to draw, but I know nothing about that subject. And so I approach it the same way in the beginning as I would anything. I'm looking at the big shapes, but I also uh, take the time to do a little bit of research. And with the computer these days, um, that's so much easier to do. For instance, um, since I know nothing about the anatomy of an owl, uh, I might want to uh, check out, for instance, the skull, which is um, the, the eyes of the owl seem to me to be uh, the most prominent and perhaps the most interesting to me um, about this image. And so I looked up um, owl anatomy, easy to do. And this is the skull of the owl. And what struck me is that it is similar to the human skull in the sense that the eyes are big, but they are so much smaller than the rest of the head. And when I look at the skull anatomy, I see that the orbit or the opening for the eyes is very large. And the, the, the actual size of the eyeballs are relatively small inside that big opening. And that is very similar to the human skull. Um, and of course, I am very interested in drawing the human being as well. So if you look at the human skull, you see these huge openings, but the actual eyeball is quite small. So the orbit or the opening for the eyeball, and the eyeball actually you're seeing a very small part of the, the eyeball is much larger. It's, it's a, a sphere that takes up that whole space, but we don't see it because the eyelid and flesh cover it. Um, if you overlay that onto the skull, you can further see how much smaller the eyeball is in comparison to the whole or the indentation, or as we call it, the orbit, that it fits inside. And so that is the same thing that is true. The, here's the eyeballs. But this whole area, which is, of course, covered in fur, but um, that whole area is actually the eye socket, I guess is the other word that we use. Um, so that became very interesting to me. And although I am not going to draw that bone structure when I uh, draw this owl, I am going to be aware that that lighter part where the fur is covering is actually representing that um, socket. So the other thing that I have to decide is how much of this owl I want to draw because um, it has a lot of feathers. It's a bird after all. And I don't know that I want to draw every single feather. Even if I had the time to do that, I'm not sure I would want to do that. Um, of course, one can. And so if that is your interest, then that is what you should go for. Um, I would suggest after getting the big shapes. But um, some people who render the owl in this lovely piece, I do not know the name of this person, but um, they got the big shapes and then they give just hints of uh, feathers here. Now this of course is watercolor, but um, one could do the same thing with colored pencil or any other, even with graphite. Um, and you get a sense of feathers, but you can see they haven't actually drawn a single feather here. They've just given an indication, but I think what makes uh, this drawing powerful and tells me that it's an owl is that they've gotten the big shape of the head here. They've uh, rendered that very faithfully to uh, the way an owl head is, and the shape of the body is very faithful to the way the owl body is. So that is the way I would want to start. 
Now there, again, if you go online, you find all kinds of assistances. I would never have enough books to, in the world to uh, help me figure out all of the details of all the interesting things I find. But now with the internet, a little Googling helps. Here's a very, very quick um, idea of the big shapes. This reduces the owl shape into two, with a circle up there and a sort of oval down there. Now that is... The big shape, that is a beginning. If we look closely, we can see that the head really isn't a circle. It's more of an, uh, an, an oblong uh, oval this way. But this is a very quick way to get um, something down that we can then move around. This is a little more detailed uh, way, and I like this because it divides the head um, into these uh, major shapes. So again, they've done the circle and uh, the nose, I suppose, that's the nose, uh, is that kind of shape. Um, but then, as you can tell, this artist is, that was just a beginning. As they continue, they modify the shape of that head to be more faithful to the actual um, shape of the head. So it's always good to remember that the beginning big shapes is just a beginning to get something down and then it's um, refined from there. So um, if I were beginning this um, image of this owl, I would do as those little tutorials suggested. And I'm, I'm using just a piece of graphite here to simplify. I could do this with colored pencil as well, or I could start it with this uh, very lightly and then erase some of the graphite so that it doesn't mix with the colored pencil. So that would be another way to start. But I would start with um, this basic shape of the uh, head and then this sort of oval on his body is sort of slanting over that way. So I think I would follow that. And then um, he's sitting on a little stump, so I think I would uh, just kind of indicate that. His little feet are here, and the stump is actually slanted off to a side, so I kind of like that, so I would do that. And then I would go back in, oops, sorry, and begin to um, modify that head shape to be more faithful to... Um, that owl shape. And the owl, uh, if you look at the um, bone structure, the uh, full uh, skeleton of an owl, he does have a neck, but um, you don't really see it with his the way his feathers and so forth are constructed. It's like his, his head is just kind of tucked down in here. Um, and uh, then I would get this uh, nice shape, as was suggested in that helpful tutorial. Uh, get the big shape of the ears, <clears throat> um, and then the eyes are somewhere in here. And then within the body here, I'm seeing uh, three major shapes even within that. I see um, this sort of uh, feather. This is probably a wing. I really don't know um, bird anatomy, but I'm guessing that's a wing. And then I'm seeing this sort of larger shape. And then these under, uh, whatever these are, probably more wings, are coming down. So if, get his little claws or his feet down here. So um, even in, in that quick uh, rendering, I have something that looks uh, basically like an owl. It's a little bit too wide. It should be a little bit longer, so I'm going to... Uh, pull back and look at that and kind of assess my proportions. Um, but that would be the way I would start. Then I would kind of step back, I think, and look at it and keep something like this in mind, because I find this very appealing. And I'd figure out where I want to go uh, to do detail. What's most important to me? The head definitely would be important to me. I might do that in a lot of detail. And then I love this little rain, ridge of... Um, feathers in here, and so I might do those in some detail. And then I would want to get um, this, this part of his body is sort of tucked under there, so I'd want to make sure that I 
I got some tone under there to indicate that he's plumped up and kind of round there. And I would definitely do a detail on the uh, claws because I think they are so interesting. And it anchors him on this uh, post. And from there I would just continue to um, do as much detail as I felt was pleasing or um, indicative of this uh, lovely little owl whose uh, particular name I have forgotten. Anyway, um, that is how I would approach it.